also completing the front row. Mark Gillies in the ERA A-type, the light green car, car number three. Green flag at the back, signal given to the drivers. And the flag falls at Goodwood. We go racing on the Saturday. One car left on the line there. Hands up to the rest of the drivers. The majority of the field, all but one, made it off the line as we go racing into Madrid Corner. Well, that was neat and tidy. I think that might have been David Morris who didn't get going initially. But anyhow, going uh, quite nicely through the pack. But the BRM got into the lead. It's noticed in front. But now Ben Fiddler, sorry, alongside is the silver car making the moves. The ERA pushing on very, very hard indeed. And David Morris is always right in the middle. That's David ch chasing down. It looks like he might get his nose in front by Fordwater. But by the time they got there, the power from that mighty V16 in the BRM would really come to play. Now diving into St. Mary's, this wonderful flow of cars. Mark Gillies in the background getting a little bit taily. The first part of St. Mary's. Yeah, great start there. And up for the lead then for the BMW, for the uh, BRM, I should say, uh, in the lead there. And then a good, good launch off the line for David Morris to get himself up to second place. Mark Gillies hanging on in third, not the getaway that our pole sitter wanted in the ERA D type. Yeah, quite a few cars you saw made really good starts, and then the, the next second or third gear change just didn't quite work. The outer was going very well to start with off the line for Ian Baxter. He's fallen back in position or two, but the first three starting to make their break. And David Morris is, has, has plenty of intent. But the BRM again at the end of straight. That's where the power really just seems to produce. But that's also not to take away from Rob Hall being able to break as late as he possibly dares. He knows how to drive that car very well indeed. Albeit a car that's not been around too long. This is a continuation of the BRM V16. And for now it's leading the race. But he said before the race, I'm on tenterhooks. <laughs> I'm not surprised. Extraordinary sound. The V16 coming past our commentary position to start lap two of the race. The BRM is ahead. A great gain of two places for David Morris in the ERA B type. And then you've got giving chase there. Car number three trying to turn it into second place. Good launch out of Madrid Corner trying to take the move to the inside in the other ERA. The light green one now trying to look for the move. Watch and enjoy. You can see precisely what these two drivers are doing. But for that extra momentum out of the second part of Madrid prepare. Uh, Mark Gillies up past uh, David Morris into second place. But you know what? That was uh, drivers who know each other very well. They can relax next to each other, trust each other. And uh, right now, Mark Gillies, we saw him getting very uh, skitterish in St. Mary's on the first lap, is now really getting the flow that's so important. It's 11th corner. Oh, oh, looking in those tiny side mirrors there. Uh, our race leader in the BRM, Rob Hall, he's looking one side, but ha-ha, around the outside, the other side, taking the, the sort of wide line there is Mark Gillies. And look at the progress through the kick now. It's got to last the whole way. Coming into the kick. So wait for it, front, but wait for the power of the BRM to really come through. Gillies takes the lead, and then we've got the end of the straight, and then the BRM will fight back, and the BRM goes back ahead. Super stuff. Great contrast between the two cars. BRM going past DRM. Wow. We said this was going to be a race that's really, really dynamic. If this can carry on for the next, uh, well, let's say 17 minutes, we've got 16 and a half minutes remaining on the clock, that would be absolutely fantastic. But do not discount David Morris in the background. But that sound of the BRM, absolutely the best noise of the entire weekend. And for BRM fans, the longer it goes, could it take a win? That was always the question they asked in period. It was very, very uh, fragile at times. Good to see the Alta making progress there in the background. The shot, the green car coming through. Uh, very nicely, Michael Gans in the mix there as well. Still see what's going to happen to Ben Fiddler. He started on position. He's the back car in that position in that group as Gillies goes in front again. A carbon copy. So taking the lead at this point as we make our way through the right hander, the BRM will know that it's got superior power. But through the twisty bits, it is terrific to see how Gillies has been driving all weekend long. And as he rises on the exit of St Mary's, he's got the lead. And uh, all of the power from the BRM in your picture at the moment, driven by Rob Hall, it's going to have to be deployed in a few moments' time. You can really see how the first two cars, the ERA and the BRM, have to be driven with different styles. And Mark Gillies, if you're new to historic racing, there's nothing wrong with his car. That's the way to get it going super fast, because he's keeping it really light on its tyres and just constantly adjusting. We saw this one starting from the pit lane. Unfortunately, Julian Majou's Alpha is not going a great deal further. 308C. Uh, smoking away, and Julian's driven that car for years, so he's uh, wise and aware of uh, when things are going wrong, but nothing at the moment is going wrong for Mark Gillies. 
So car owner Richard Skipworth will be delighted. We're delighted because it's a classic scrap. We just need the BRM to come a little bit further forward. A couple of years ago when this we saw it on track, it did 9,000 regs. It's now 11,000 regs. And he's going to have to use all of them to catch Gillies. Looking further back. And we've got Michael Gantz. A car that is ahead of our pole sitter who didn't get the launch off the line that he was looking for, looking to re-establish himself, looking to find himself back into a rhythm. Indeed, so he's fighting with Michael Gans. that's the battle for fifth place, up into fourth place after a poor start, uh, initial great start for me and Baxter in the outer, he's up to fourth place, will be running sort of on his own, but those first three, it's, it was close, it's now starting to open up, and what we're seeing is the silvery array of David Morris falling back towards the outer, then come fifth and sixth, that battle between Gin, uh, Gan Gantz and Fiddler, Nick Topless not too far back behind them, but it's, it might be a short race, 20 minutes, but these cars can be temperamental, but particularly in temperature, we have temperature here today. Yeah, we certainly do. If uh, you've just warned it in, oh, big moment there for Fiddler, who gathers it all together, and trying to turn sixth place into fifth, and having lost a couple of positions on the start line, and off goes car number one, the Alfa Romeo from 1938. Yeah, well, that Julian Majoub showing his uh, maturity and knowledge as well. He, we saw him coming smoking slowly, but he's found a place that's safe to park the car. These cars are worth so much money. And the way you have to drive these cars is so different. It's steering on the throttle as much as the steering wheel, and that's why they're constantly adjusting the steering wheel. Just a little twitch here, a little twitch there. One of the most famous cars in the field, Paddy's Dowling is driving it. We're looking at it now, car number five, it's Remus. It's the ex-Prince Beera car that was driven all around Europe the days before the World Championship. And, uh, you know, bought for him by his, uh, his cousin, Prince Tula. And it's a car that uh, took victory in the, in the Gooder Trophy in the first revival with uh, Ludwig Lindsay uh, driving that. And uh, it's been, sorry, Valentine Lindsay driving it. Now let's see who ran wide Rob and how. Well, completely running out of road. It's and, uh, race leader just going through. And that's magic. It's a corner that's super, super tricky. Now that's not the sort of place you expect to see a driver of Rob Hall's calibre going off. One does wonder... We'd got the gap down to half a second. Well, he'd had a, you know, he'd had a really good lap trying to get the gap down for the lead of the race, but just deep there. And uh, now, as you can see, a luxury advantage for uh, Gillies out front. Well, that, now the fight back starts the BRM, but that's a really unusual moment. But I think you hit the nail on the head there, Alex. He just did his fastest lap of the race, maybe just as a tad ambitious going into, into the first part of Madrid, but he's gathered it all up. But now there is our race leader, Mark Gillies, pulling very far clear. He was half a second and clear at the start of that. Now he's got to look in his mirrors to find the BRM and it's now managed to get very quickly back into second place. Puff of smoke there as he uh, changed up, constantly just chasing after our race leader. But let's see if Rob Hall could compose himself. You know what? He's flicked a switch. He's gone as a maximum attack there. You can see the tail coming out when they went into Woodcook. Now, I was just talking before about how a different driving style. This is sort of heavier car than the R8. Oh, now, oh, suddenly error. race leader Mark Gillies has a problem. Hey, who's next? And it's going to be a change for the lead across the line. You have to drive every single metre of every single lap around here and back into the lead. One mistake at turn one before for Hall. A mistake at the end of the lap for Gillies and a change of lead. OK, I'm just starting to wonder if someone's dropped a bit of oil coming out of the chicane. That's not a very Mark Gillies like mistake, but anyhow, he managed to gather it up without bouncing it across the grass into all. So, it's ERA versus BRM with the BRM back in front when Rob Hall least expected it. He probably thought you can't give Mark Gillies a three-second lead, which effectively is what he did, but he fought back quickly up to second place. Got a surprise gift going down the start finish straight. The answer's closing in. That's good to see uh, car 61, Ian Baxter as well, in fourth place. So, let's take a look at what happened on this lap. Oh, this is the exit of the chicane. Quite simply, too much traffic exactly where Mark Gillies wanted to put that ERA. Ah, we have the yellow and red warning flag, slippery surface. And he's back ahead. He's, uh, let's check in on this camera angle. This is a great tussle. And uh, Gillies has pulled his way back through once again. Right, you can often say with cars of this vintage, pre-war cars and cars immediately after the Second World War, then leaking fluid. But it, it does appear to be now... Let's take a look where it went wrong. Oh, gosh, good grief. That's uh, St. Mary's. <laughs> and uh, little you can see the crops. Well, he saw the crops. A little bit of lawn mowing going on with a beautiful car. The lead changing over and over and over again. And that's how Gillies got on by. 
chop and change and all along David Morris in third place I said he's playing a waiting game waiting and watching and he's watching a phenomenal man now take a look at this this was when Mark Gillies was leading the BRM accelerating past down towards the first corner David Morris is in there in the silver ERA and the outer right with him as well but this is the moment Rob Hall takes it to the edge constantly adjusting the steering wheel Mark Gillies they both made mistakes quite you almost never get to say that with these drivers experience behind the wheel but this is a fantastic start to the day's racing out here so Paul finds himself out front picking his way through the traffic and we've got a four car battle out front the amount of uh, it's not easy to, to maneuver these cars around this famous old circuit but we've seen plenty of hair raising moments to start things today but it's advantage BRM as we make our way out of some merits. Now the big point after about two laps, the, the first three had got clear, the gaps were increasing, but these cars, you know, they have to be nursed to an extent. They're all running and they're quite temperamental on the methanol and these drives have experience of how to nurse them around, but I didn't expect the field to close up like this. You never want to see the driver having little errors, but it shows they're pushing right to the edge of where the cars could possibly go. BRM against ERA, the drive period, People, when this circle did no, opened in 1948, would have welcomed this battle. Traffic could be an issue for this quartet as they scored clear. I don't quite sense that David Morris in the second the second of the ERAs, the silver cars, quite got the pace. He hasn't made an error, though. That's why he's still in the mix. Yeah, he, uh, he's taking a very measured approach. Gillies, then Hall, then Morris, then Baxter. The drivers in your picture, and you can see that Gillies is far more circumspect coming into the chicane through woodcode and into the chicane the brm makes time obviously on the straights the brm has that advantage as well and now uh, all over the back trying to make the progression the outer beautiful outer driven by ian baxter the 61 is version from yeah. 1937 in the mix now battling for third place maybe looking for a move there's no move at the moment gillies holds the lead Paul is trying to put the pressure on and uh, you could throw a blanket over them as they head into the into the turn. But all along the driver's looking up ahead and now David Morris trying to take a tilt up the inside has to back off uh, as they go into St Mary's. But the BRM I sense is slightly falling back and I think the fastest of that trio oh dear, the, the MG uh, Bellevue Special has gone around but the good news is it's back in the race with that incredible bit of early aerodynamic styling with that long pointed tail goes, goes down to a, like a, a bee sting at the, at the back but uh, now have we had any further change no we haven't second third and fourth still brm era alsa but i think if uh, the alsa can get through and now david morris is going through and i fear there's been a problem there for uh, rob hall he's nursing something of that brm that's a, a statement that could have been said in period as well just the, B, just the BRM jab delivered there, Bruce. Uh, uh, great battle now. So up goes uh, Morris to second place. The outer of Baxter is now on the podium as it stands. Clearly an issue for the BRM. You know that if it's losing positions on the straight, all is not well. And uh, real disappointment for Hall, who has provided us with some super entertainment all the way through the race as the lapped car points the direction for these two who have been separated by hardly any space at all and uh, it remains the case heading in to Madwick Corner. Yeah, just taking a look at their pace, there's clearly oil down, probably from the very car, the BRM that's pulled into the pits, because their best laps are about six seconds faster than the lap times they're doing now. And of course, we've seen the drivers, these cars do feel as though they're on tiptoes. Oh, now it could, it, 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 at the moment it's ERA 1 and 2, but the Alta at number 61 of Ian Baxter certainly fancies uh, splitting them up and now he's diving down the inside. Looks though move has been made, good move. Great move, great race so far for the outer of Ian Baxter who takes second position and immediately Morris tries to fight back there in the number nine car as we climb the hill. Now what I noticed going through St Mary's, the very unusual line, a very tight line on the exit there from Ian Baxter. He's trying to work out where the oil is or more to the point where the oil is not. That's why he adapted his line there or maybe he just stood wide on the oil as it happens. But uh, again you can see them constantly changing. Look, 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 sideways. Hey. Historic racing, it's the real McCoy. <laughs> it really is. And as they make their way back to home, we've had eight laps on the board, five to go. It's Gillies out front, and then Baxter now in second. You know, in so many ways, when you get the joy of racing at Goodwood, 
Yeah, of course you want to finish in the top three. You want to go meet Ed Foster for a, an interview afterwards. But it's about enjoying these cars that is a, on a circuit that is just brilliant for historic racing. You know, on a sunny Saturday morning when you can probably have a long cooling drink after this race. What a great place to go racing. You're quite new, Alex, to historic racing, but it's proper racing. And, and the, the certain driver, well, let's name it, Sterling Moss was told when he did an event a long time ago, historic racing states, uh, you only overtake on the straightaways. He went, well, that's not racing. <laughs> That's a great quote. Now, a fabulous car to see in the background with the white flashes around it's known is the Alpha Alfetta, the 158, the car that dominated the first year of the World Championship. And that's just going past uh, Marcus Nesius in a, the silver uh, Maserati 6CM. So there's quite a lot of performance differences between these cars, but the respect and the signalling, you know, they don't want to damage their cars, they want to keep things safe. And again, that, that is something that's really drummed into all these drivers because a lot of this machinery really priced it's a delage in that mix as well that running in that typical french uh, racing blue when cars did run by and large in their national colors we've got the alfa Romeo leading the maserati leading the delage this further back this is in the battle uh, for eighth place you see them uh, continuing on there Redfield behind the wheel of the Alfetta. Well, he's done well. He started 14th, and I know we've had a couple of uh, cars uh, having retirements, but he's managed to get up to 8th place, so good progress for him. Mark Gillies in the race leading number 3, the bright green, or pale green, very early ERA, 1964, one of the A-type cars. Ex-Raymond Ra Raymond May's car, and Mark has huge amount of experience uh, racing this car, and you can see he's just being a little bit cautious through the traffic, but he's sitting on a lead last time around, best part of three seconds, for 2.7 seconds. This time I sense possibly a little bit more, but it's who's going to be across the line? Is it going to be Baxter in second place? Yes, the green Baxter out of just behind that black ERA, and the car in third place is the silver ERA just behind David Morris, who's half a second down. There they go. Wonderful rear view shot through. Oh! Now, Sudden adjustment of line there for the Alter in second place. I think he was a big, being a little bit cautious. Certainly had to come off the power when he wanted to be sliding through the corner. Talking sliding, Ooh. there's Peter Greenfield showing us the sponsors' logos on the side of the car. Don't worry, not sponsors here. Oh, nice, nice rooster tail there. Gets back onto the circuit. And that was a few moments ago. I don't think, I don't think the Maserati was too impressed with the way that he rejoins. There was a shake of the head. He's very, very expensive old machines as we go back to our race leader. It's a little bit close for comfort. Well, it was uh, going into, into lab and Mark Gillies was going towards the outside and suddenly uh, the Lago Talbot of uh, Volker Hickert uh, went towards him as well. So there you are sitting on a lead of just under three seconds. You don't want to throw it away. Th th thank you very much, I think, was the message from Mark Gillies there. But anyhow, they sorted all that. Yes, adio. So off goes Mark Gillies, 2.8 seconds clear, and the first part of his lap hasn't been so good for Baxter in second place, but uh, we saw that moment at, at, Wood, at uh, Madwick where Baxter in the out of the number 61, the dark green car, had to come off where he wanted to be carrying momentum as he went past back markers. I thought he was going to lose second place, but David Morris couldn't quite capitalise, and the clock keeps counting down, just over two minutes remain. So it'll be one for the lap and an extra one after that. Two more laps to go for Mark Gillies. Lapping at the moment about 1 minute 39, start of the race, first flight lap, he did 1 minute 32.8, but definitely oil is down on the racing circuit. Mark Gillies continuing to take his ERA from 1931 to He Will Hope, the Goodwood Trophy, and the success that comes with it as well. We've seen plenty of uh, great driving from Baxter in second place in the green outer, going through your pitch and now, part 61. They say lightning doesn't strike twice, but it did on consecutive laps for Ian Baxter there in the outer. He found two cars both times going into Madrid and again had to go, do I go between them, around the outside, up the inside? It's a little bit of guesswork, but uh, each time... David Morris in, in the number 9 ERA, the, the silver one, we can see the rear shot there going to St Mary's, also had to play the guessing game, but it's been fairly even Stevens between them, but neither has found an advantage, and neither has been able to close on our race leader. Yeah, a third of a second was gained by Baxter on Gillies, but Gillies will be looking in those small mirrors on the side and just noticing he's got enough, but it's a question of where the traffic is going to be sitting across his nose on... That's green ERA, car number three, the R3A, but Mark Gillies, I think, has got enough in hand to keep this one under control. Inside a minute to go. Mark Gillies is making his way to Woodcote Corner now. Having gone down Le the Levant Strait through the kink, and then he's making his way through the chicane 
for his final tour of the circuit. There we are. There's the lime green ERA. There's the Alta. And then coming through, David Morris, who started fourth on the grid, also in an ERA, the silver one, that will take third place if you complete the final 2.3 miles. So you really feel for Rob Hall, who was right in the mix, in the lead, out of the lead, but nursing that BRM all the time, the V16, a shame to lose the noise, because it's the most astonishing sound. But uh, Mark Giddies eventually worked his way clear, but it really did seesaw between them for several laps, and fabulous, fabulous racing. But these drivers, you, they, they will uh, have earned their rest. You can see, even on the straights, they, they hardly can keep in a straight line, because uh, trying to get the power down, the supercharge kicking in, and uh, Mark Giddies in the super slow-mo, large steering wheel. Just a little adjustment. Even I like to do the right index finger tapping the steering wheel. There. He's <laughs> relaxed. As relaxed as you can be behind the wheel of an ERA. And uh, excellent to see he's driving today in a car from 1931. Car number three still having to work hard to confirm the victory. Started this lap with a 3.4 second advantage. And on a glorious day at Goodwood. He's having some fun with it now as he acknowledges car out of his path he's very nearly home for the checkered flag through the ladder kick what i love there the foot was still planted and to position the car just as the moving of the steering wheel kicking the tail out a little bit but the foot planted so down the lap and straight to woodcut for the final time mark has had many a win here and for people seeing these cars racing for the first time to see how much sideways is involved sideways in many racing cars means you've just wrecked your lap but here it just has doubled the fun for people watching but look how much closer ian baxter has gone suddenly if there's a missed gear change we'll have a change for the Lead, and Ian Baxter fancies it. Over the line, side by side, the two cars, it's going to be incredibly close, it's Baxter on the line by one tenth of a second. What just happened? The outer steals it on the line and Baxter wins the Goodwood Trophy. Well, I'd have to throw my script in the bin. It was comfortable win there for Mark Gillies. Three and a half seconds clear at the start of the final lap. A little bit of traffic. We didn't see in shot. There was a slight blocking going out of the second lap. And so lots of momentum there. But talk about never say die. Ian Baxter, my hat, on even on a warm day, well and truly docked to you. What a fantastic run for the Alta.